again, we're going to talk about the wind triangle problem, which is how you decide what to do to compensate for wind if you're in an airplane or for current or if you're in a boat or for the solar wind if you're in a spacecraft. Um, and so what I've got here is the British Lancaster, which was a heavy World War II bomber didn't have much for navigation equipment and so these calculations were very important as far as finding the target so they knew what course they needed to go to get to the target and they knew how fast the airplane could go and they had a forecast for the wind and and then they used the um, E6B or something like it British, it probably turned the other way to um, predict which way they needed to steer in order to uh, get to the target. They didn't know much about the wind. Um, it worked okay, but not very well. So he, here's the situation that we have. Um, we've got a course that we want to steer. I always say make big pictures, and this is no time to be skimpy about it. And what happens is the wind is coming from some direction that you, that you hope you know. And, and the wind is going to act along the whole course. There are things that happen. There are technicalities, like if the wind shifts in the middle of the intended course, then, then you have to do two of these. So anyway, so we're just going to put the, the wind in. And, and let me just... Uh, there are all these wind... Uh, direction and speeds should be about the same and you can see that the wind is acting on the course so what the airplane has to do is starting here um, is what we're going to have to do is steer into the wind until the wind pushes the airplane um, back to the course so um, the pencil here is how far the airplane goes in an hour and the wind is um, how far the the uh, airplane gets pushed to the wrong way in an hour so if the airplane wants to do this it has to do this and similar things with boats and spacecraft and whatever and so so you've got a fixed length here that's the the uh, actual airspeed so I'm gonna mark this point about there as being the the solution. This this is not a bad solution if you uh, draw the angles accurately. Anyway, so let's kind of line up what the variables are now, and then we can go on and talk about analytic ways of solving this problem and the E6B machine way of solving the problem. So what we have is uh, the airspeed. So I'll call that A no reason to be too clever about it and we have the uh, wind correction I'm gonna call that Omega because Omega is the cr closest Greek letter to wind and we've got the wind excuse me we've got the wind um, the wind speed and so so I'm gonna call the wind speed W and I'm uh, so we get this kind of picture and so it looks like now we're getting a triangle the sides are A and W and this unknown ground speed which I'm gonna call G for ground speed and so that's how far the airplane would actually go over the ground in an hour now this looks like the wind is a little bit behind the airplane and so it should go a little bit further because the wind is pushing it along okay uh, we don't have much because Omega is unknown G is unknown there's one more thing that we have here and that's this angle between the wind and the intended course. So this is something that the meteorology people would tell you. And, um, and so now you would know that angle. So I'm gonna call that angle alpha. And so we have this angle here. So let me kind of line up what the variables are here because um, that's gonna be what we're gonna try to solve. So here are the knowns. Known. Wind speed the wind angle to the course alpha and the airspeed so that's here's the airspeed here is the angle alpha that you know and here is the wind speed that you think you know 
and then the unknowns, the unknowns are the ground speed and the wind correction angle omega. So this is just a natural setup for the law of sines, uh, which we'll do in the next video. And then we'll need the law of cosines, which we'll do in the next, next video. But this is the problem that we're trying to solve. If you did this with good measurements, um, this would be enough. But uh, it's interesting to see what it gets more and how it relates to what we do. So next video coming up soon.